viewers, welcome to this week's episode of Health Watch and Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN. I am Angela Emeka Evibo. On the program today, we shall be talking about emotional abuse. We hear a lot about physical abuse, drug abuse, child abuse, and so on. But currently, emotional abuse is becoming one of the social vices the world is contending with. Although it's difficult to measure, some research suggests that between 50 to 80 percent of adults may have experienced emotional abuse in their lifetime. Now, this percentage suggests that it is a serious problem and may be affecting more persons than you can imagine. My guest today is Dr. Samuel Adebowale. He's a mental health professional with special focus on trauma, addiction, and abuse recovery. You're welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Good to have you. Same here. Let me invite my viewers. So please do send your question, share your experience with us on our social media handle showing on your screen right now. So good to have you. Thank it's a pleasure to be coming. here. Thank you for having me. So we're talking emotional abuse. Yeah. Um, lately, it just went agog. Everybody's talking about physical abuse, mm -hmm. emotional abuse. I mean, they were talking about physical abuse, abuse and somehow emotional abuse started Cropping coming up, out. Yeah. And then people are talking emotional abuse is a serious mm -hmm. problem. It's a serious problem. And then you're thinking, okay, physical abuse, drug abuse, you have emotional abuse. And then you're looking at the statistics that are saying 50 to 80% of adults would have been abused at some point. So maybe even me sitting here being abused, I didn't even know that I was Apparently. abused. So what I want to know first is what is emotional abuse? Of course, you know, well, let's just start with what is emotional abuse, abuse when you say the word, you know. Okay, so I'll rather start pro pro professionally from the word abuse. Abuse is the um, abnormal use, the bad use of anything at all, is the excessive use of anything at all. Okay. Now, when we talk about emotional abuse, is the negative interference of human words, of human action on people's emotions. When the emotions of people are tampered with, affected the wrong way, and it's done consistently. Mm. So we can't talk about abuse without um, the word consistently. So okay. yeah, it has to be over time. So, so it's not a one-off thing. No, not a one-off okay. thing. So okay. when something is becoming an abuse, so it starts this way. There's an there's an action. An action, okay. That forms an habit. Okay, okay. An habit that forms a character. Okay. A character that forms a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So abuse is a spectrum. It ought to have been consistently, but then we need to um, know it from the very scratch. So I always ask people to be um, sensitive so that they can take cues when they have been abused. Okay. So abuse is not just when it is, when it, it is actioned. It starts from the little um, words, the little comments, you know, before it gets to the full-blown abuse. For example, mm. I'll start, I'll get into sexual abuse to explain this. Okay. So sexual abuse starts when, um, start with the comments of you look good, your backside, your front side, your body structure. Mm. All those comments are comes before the actual action. All oh, right. Okay. So okay. abuse starts from the comments, from the gestures. You know, when people when people go, uh, his hairs are black, body shaming. Mm. He's not mm. tall. Mm. She's mm. short. Before he actually gets to the fact, fact that people now go, she's short now. Everybody knows. So it starts so with the subtle, subtle comments okay. before he gets to the full blown comments, and then before he starts affecting that person on the inside and the person starts feeling inferior, start having fears of expressing themselves, of being where regular people would be, of being themselves, the true self that is on the inside. Okay. And emotional abuse is often not known or felt or seen rather, okay. but it's felt on the inside. Okay. It's deep. It's the deepest form of, of um, abuse that anybody can go through and it's the most hidden form of abuse that anybody can experience. So okay. it takes a while for them to express them themselves and tell people, oh, this is what, how I felt about this. For example, when, something, when someone did something wrong to you, mm -hmm. and you felt really, really, really hot deep down, mm -hmm. and the hot was there for days, or, or each time you see that person, that hot feeling, that terrible feeling, is your emotion being abused. Hmm. Okay. So it's not, it's not something that, just as you say, it's not a one-off where maybe somebody insults you over something, but it's mm. when it starts having an influence 
over you. you. So someone can insult you once and then you don't feel it, you, you just leave. It, yes. And then it keeps coming. It gets to a point where you, you keep pondering over it. Am I really this person? Is this really who I am? And then, if, and then it starts affecting your output to life. Okay, so which means abuse really cannot, cannot just happen to somebody who is a stranger to you. No. It has to be somebody that you see So most of the time you're yes. abused by your own people. Okay, okay. And okay. the first form of emotional abuse is verbal abuse, what people say to you. Okay. You have people who, that are um, sensitive to words. So when those words hit you, you keep thinking about it, and then you accept that, oh, maybe, maybe that is who I am. Maybe I should just leave it that way. Mm. And then you get emotionally abused, and then somehow we see it as people being brainwashed or people being caged in their minds, and then they are limited to um, who they're supposed to be. Mm. Okay, so that's a good one to look at it. Uh, so that's becoming clearer now. Yes. So the abuse, it's, it's not a one-off. Most of the time, it should happen to you by someone that is around you or close to exactly. you. Exactly. Like parents. Like parents, um, like family and friends. Family and friends. Siblings, colleagues at colleagues work. work. Okay, you know. husband, spouse. Yeah. Could be the... Okay, let's... People let's, you basically share common grounds with. Share common grounds. There's people that you... But, okay... Now, there's so many things coming in my head now, but I'm trying to see how to take them one after the other. Okay. So we flow with it. Now, we have people who put people down. Because, of course, you have the one that does the abuse and the one that is being abused. Yes. I think there's a name for it, you know. Uh, the, the perpetrator and the, and the victim. And the victim, yes. So now, before I even go to the victim, I always wonder why will somebody want to inflict such um, abuse on another person over a period of time until okay. it becomes a problem for the person, person. to manage. Well, I, I mean, even if I tell somebody something bad, I even feel bad about it. Yeah. You know, when I say something, I say, oh, I shouldn't have said this. Why should I? Why this is not nice to somebody? You know, no matter who it is, I don't even I like to say words because I know what words mean yes. to people and even to myself. But why would somebody want to do that? Okay, why? so I would start by saying that abuse is a vicious cycle. Okay. By vicious cycle, I mean that someone that has been abused before has 99% tendency to abuse someone else. So if I've been told at certain stage in my life mm. that this is what I look like, what happens to me, I won't become what my peers will be like, see, my mates doing this, doing that, have 99% ten tendency to say to someone else. So if, so if you find a parent saying to their children, look at your mates, see what mm. your mates are doing, you, you are here, it has been said to them. Mm. And there's a way abuse becomes internalized and then later you bring it out. So that's why we say it's a vicious cycle. It keeps going around. And then it comes to the next person to the next person. So someone somewhere has to break that cycle so it doesn't continue. Mm. And then breaking that cycle means that you become aware of your emotions, your feelings. And you know how to put people at bay when they are where you know they are going to hurt your feelings. Mm. So for someone like me, um, I've surrounded my, my, my myself with people that will know would always use the right words. And when you use the wrong words, I tell you, what you've said, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. It's not nice to say to yourself, let alone to me. Okay. So I stand at the gate of my mind mm. and I do the sensor of what gets into my mind. Mm. Just like the Bible says, you should mount guard you over your heart. Don't your allow heart. everything exactly. come into your, you know, into your heart. Okay, so that's talking about the person who is abused. abused. So that person must have been abused. Abused, yes. Yes. But sometimes it's even extreme. Yeah. It's not the same thing. It's the same thing. Because so somebody else did it to you, you think you do it to somebody else. So it's else. how the mind works. It's just a particular mind function mm. where you, you get abused some years back and it comes back and you abuse other people. Mm. So what you can do about it now is to break the cycle and then disabuse your mind first of saying those things. And then you're conscious, you're deliberate about what you say to people. Mm. And then it breaks gradually. Because that is a journey in itself. What of people, there's some people that I hear that have actually mental issues. Where they, I don't know if they, and I've heard of narcissism, I've heard of bipolar. I've bipolar, heard of yeah. People who do things, it's actually a, sick, a problem. I don't want to use the word sickness, I don't think this is the right word. But it's actually a problem. A mental illness. A mental illness for okay. them yes. that are doing this to other people. Do they also need to, because I'm trying to start with the abuser before I go to, to the, the victim. victim yes. to, the, to the victim. Now, do they also need to find help? Yes. Mental help. So yes. how do they know? Uh, how, uh, how are they supposed to know that they have a problem? Because now, there's a, I'm sure there's a, there's a joy they get from 
putting other people down or some satisfaction. I don't know. Okay, so I'll say it this way. Depending on how long someone has been abused, so there's a place of where they accept the reality, say, okay, this is who I am, and this is what I'll do to other people. But they need to get to a point where they, real they realize that this is not what is meant to be and that they need help. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, a lot of people live in denial. They do not accept the reality of the fact that they have a problem. Mm -hmm. But through this some of them con uh, conversations, they will realize, oh, I think I have this issue. And then the next st step will be to seek help. Mm -hmm. And knowing that when help comes, help will take a while. Mm. It's a journey. Okay. But, one more, but once you are set to get the help that you need, you see a therapist and you get the right help over time. But then I say to people that their responsiveness to help determines how fast okay. they'll get the help. So if you find people, so it's in a flex. People have been abused extremely. Mm. So they abuse other people extremely. Mm -hmm. And people madly, they, they abuse other people madly. So it depends on how and where they were abused, what their foundation was like, mm -hmm. where they grew from, environment, the people they yeah, lived with. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to use the basic word so that we would get it. Because okay. abuse sometimes comes from who raised us, how we were raised, where we lived, around where we grew, the things we see as culture, mm -hmm. traditions, norms. Okay. You know, okay. that's where it comes from. And if we accept them, we are accepting the reality that like, this is how we are. Until you see that, oh, this is a problem. And then you start to get help. Okay. So most, most, most of the times when you say this, if we do, um, people do it extremely and they feel they don't see anything bad in what they do. Mm -hmm. It has become a culture, a lifestyle to them. So you know, somebody, I told you about the flex at the beginning. Exactly, yes. So should somebody be telling the abuser that, see, you need to go get help? Exactly. So somebody needs to tell them, just the same way you notice somebody who is overweight physically and is panting when he walks, then you tell the person, oh, I think you should go see the doctor because there's something wrong with your health. Yeah. Is that the same way you should tell an abuser so by to help him go to... <laughs> I don't know, because what I'm doing... You know, I, I'm just... Okay, for example, we had the story of the gospel singer okay. who was um, um, who died. Yeah. When you look at the husband who has been doing this to her, well, yes, based on what you know has been reported by her family members, you wonder... Is nobody telling him that, look, you need help? You know, there's this sense of, I didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm entitled to do what I did. That's where culture and tradition and belief come. So it okay. believes, oh, maybe where we're from in our family, this is what we should do as men. This is how we should discipline our women. We should flog them. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Until it starts realizing that this is actually not right. Okay, so the, healings, the, the, the solution starts from the perpetrator knowing that he's doing bad yes and then seeking help yeah and sometimes um doing bad as it were mm. can be addictive so you don't know what else to do than doing bad all the time so when they re um, realize they need help they, they get up but mind you most of these people know that they need help okay but they can't help it when they get angry when they shut and, and, and they beat up other people and do what they do but in the recess of their lives mm. like i said to people at the cool of the day when you're by yourself when you're better thinking about life you feel you've done something wrong so 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 there was a line of the story that i read i said at the end of the day she would tell her sorry she would beg her say it doesn't ha happen again apologize mm. but then it happens again yeah so at that period of apologizing and realizing has done something wrong you know she has done something wrong but doesn't know how to get help okay. so everyone every abuser knows they're doing something wrong but they no, they no longer have the willpower to get help. So it has become compulsive in them, addictive, okay. to do those bad things. So if somebody, like you're a therapist, you know, you do very well in this. If somebody um, wants to get help, yes. what's the process? I'm, I'm, I'm still on the <laughs> abuser. Thing, yeah. I've not gone to, to the, the victim, victim yet. I'm still on the abuser. Now, this person... For the, for the sake of those that are watching, yes. just notice, I find out that I do this to my spouse. I find out that I do this to my children. I find out that I abuse them. Because I would like us to even touch a little bit on the kind of things people do, you know, when you begin to call it abuse. But if the person needs help, what, what is, should he do? Do you just walk in to a hospital? Or do you just go find the therapist and say, look, I start explaining their problem. What's the process? Just like when I want to talk to the doctors, I'll say, how does somebody walk to the hospital to say, okay, I have mental illness, you know? Yeah. How do they start? So they need process? to first accept the fact that they need help. So accepting the reality 
and not living in denial. Okay. Like, I need help. You accept the reality of what it is. And that's the first thing. And then the next thing is to look for the right people to help you. Okay. Like, um, go, go for um, professional counselors, professional therapists, and try to explain that this is what you're going through okay. or what you think you need help for. And they'll, they'll ask the questions. You go through assessment okay. to further clarify what you have said. So once that has been pegged, then... Okay. Help can tell. It's good when people w work in and, and ask for help. It's fantastic. Not just when they are referred or pushed for help. Mm -hmm. So when so when some um, someone is referred or pushed for help, they really don't get the help because they don't think they need help. Okay. Because okay. they feel um, they brought me, they said I should come. And you feel, I think I need help. Mm -hmm. That's when you're hoping to go through all the process of therapy. Okay. Okay, because I know towards the end of the program, you're going to give us your contacts. Because somebody may be watching and thinking, oh, these are the traits that I'm noticing. And I'm doing this to somebody else, inflicting yeah. pain. Let me just run over the kind of things if you notice yourself doing to somebody else. I don't know if you can list one or two of a couple of them. Okay. If you notice certain things you're doing, you know, then you should come and look for help. You know, because of course we're going to drop your contact. Because somebody might be sitting there and said, I just did this to somebody now. Okay. And I need help. You know, sometimes you should, just as you say, when it becomes an addiction, you may not be able to control what okay. you're doing and right. then later you wake up and say oh i feel bad that i did it and all that so, so so the major thing is when you realize that you are short fused that things get at you very fast you get angry okay at the slightest things one if you know if you real, realize that you're always anxious at the edge you know anxious to know everything mm. you know one number two if you realize that you're always first to curse or say mm. things ver verbally even from your mind it's also a challenge even your mind, yeah. when you find it, even when you don't say it out, it's when in you say it out. It's not just when you say it out, when it's there, your mind just okay. cause that's okay. a problem. And it keeps coming all the time. Mm -hmm. And remember we said emotional abuse is deep-seated mm -hmm. in the mind. So people don't say it, you feel it alone. You go to the pain by yourself. That's why you, you must have had PPM. Um, people say this thing pained me. I was in pain for a lot of times. I didn't know who to talk to. I felt like killing myself. I felt like I have lost my word, mm -hmm. you know they didn't know what to do but they were feeling the pain inside of them mm. so that's when you should, should get help so those are the basic three books. but then it depends on the form of abuse you're going through then we can tell you the symptoms to look out for okay okay all right so thank you so much because i like that so that people that are because it concerns me a whole lot yeah. you know when people do this kind of thing to other people yeah and there's something we we really don't talk about which is the emotional abuse um emotional blackmail when people say, oh, if you don't do this for me, you won't get this. Or do this for me so this can happen. You know, most of our parents may have done that to us without even knowing. Mm -hmm. They'll say, Shabi, when school is resumes, you come for school and school fees will be, I'll pay your school fees will be. <laughs> you know? Okay. Because they want to get you to do stuff. It's emotional blackmail. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do what they need you to do. Now, it, it's bad when probably you live with people that always want to say, at the end of, of the day, I'm not the people that are... Um, responsible for you and they make you probably do all the chores, do all the work, yeah. run, run, run all the errands, yeah. till you are knackered and all of that. You know, probably when someone needs some, um, something from me, your colleague at work says, okay, do this for me. If you don't do this for me, and the person knows your weakness or where you need help, and then we we'll say, okay, if you don't do this for me, where you need help, I won't help you. So you are eager to help them. You're eager to run. Not, not because you want to do it, but because you're compelled to do it. Mm. Mm. So, that's when so it's called an emotional blackmail, and it happens a lot. A lot okay, okay. at work in church around us when spiritual uh, leaders say go and do this so because my spiritual leader has said do it i must do it mm. even if you don't want to do it even if it's not pleasing you know emotional um blackmail, blackmail kills and ruins a lot of lives because of who of the of who the person is so mm. most of them is from the superior to the inferior oh right okay that's what i'm trying to think of what kind of people yeah are involved in so my bosses yeah from the superior to the Super to the okay. interviewer they might be superior to you in knowledge in in uh, in 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 skills okay. and to you that you do not have so because i want to learn um a, a get a particular skill from you so it happens to apprentice so when their bosses go, they're meant to learn how to make clothes. They go, go and clean, my, clean for my kids, go and get food, mm. run errands. That's so common. And it's so everywhere. And it happens also in the corporate world. When, you're, when you are when you an entry <laughs> when you're level NY, when you're to a job, NYC. 
Yeah, when you are an entry person to an organization, mm -hmm. an entry employee, you know, and your boss goes, get this thing done, you come back, get that one done, which is not within the scope of what you're called to do. It happens in the church. Mm -hmm. It happens everywhere. And which we should actually look at closely. Because at the end of the day, it's like we're using people yeah, to advantage. To advance, yeah. And it's emotional blackmail because they feel, oh, if I don't do it for this person, I don't get this. And then some people go, this is the culture. It's part of it. It's what we should do. Mm. These things in themselves are wrong. Okay. So if I want to help you, I should help you regardless of whatever it is. I should be able to get my stock myself and help you and move on. Mm. But when I attach it to you doing things for me, you're emotionally blackmailing that person. It's a form of abuse that is mm. common, mm. even spiritually. You know, so my, our pastor says, our leaders, our spiritual leader says, you should get this, get that, you know, mm. and then you have to do it. Or probably get a call. So, for example, I had this friend that got a call and the spiritual leader goes, I need your car for three days. And he said, how am I supposed to go to work? Take my family around there. And he told him, sorry, you can't have it. I said, I need your car. You can't have it. Ah, and then, and then he, brought the, he brought up an issue with them. Mm -hmm. And then he walked up to me in my office and says, have I done something wrong? Mm. This, and, I, and I told my client, no, you just stood your ground. Wrong, because yeah. you have a mind of your own and you are confident enough to say no. If you said, oh, I need to get somewhere, are you free? Mm. But this evening, can I use your car? Yeah, it's simple. Yeah. But I need your car for three days. Just bring, bring it to it. my house. No, please, <laughs> no magic words in it. That's why I think, I think most people have been abused. And that's why most you people have left different you. organizations yeah. and have just kept to themselves. And when people recoil from those abuse, they, they, they are seen as angry people. Mm. They are seen as rude people. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we need to look at these things holistically. Mm. All right, so now let's move to the abused. How, how, do, how does somebody know that they've been abused? I don't know if we're going back to the question, but... I, but uh, yeah, we can go yes, provide yes, again. Yes, yes. How does somebody know that they're being abused? You know, whether in the marriage, even sometimes between siblings in school, mother to children, because I was surprised, you know, certain things my mom used to do those days. If it was now, you say, ah, she emotionally abused. Because I was watching some kids say, oh, their mother would throw slippers at them yeah. or beat them. And they said, oh, I was abused. I was traumatized. And I'm thinking, well, that was my reality. As in, that was normal. That was normal for me. Yeah. And then somebody's calling it emotional abuse. And I'm thinking, you know, that was discipline. Yeah. But because so in my there's mind. There's a thin line yes. between discipline and abuse, okay. actually. Okay. So how, does, how, how do you know? How do you then navigate that okay that discipline thing. only happens when you've done something wrong and they're putting you in order okay for abuse you don't have to do anything wrong you just have to get abused hmm. so when our parents says we've done something wrong or they know we have a tendency to, to do something wrong all the time which we know ourselves mm -hmm. and they try to check put a check on it and discipline is different from when just every other day every other hour a minute they just throw things at you unnecessarily they just abuse you unnecessarily. Hmm. So, so it, that's why I said there's a thin line between, uh, between both. Hmm. So now let's let, let me let me let me narrow it down to a couple. Yeah. Whether husband you. or wife. Yes. You know, it's becoming. I know the other day I was watching the program and they were arguing whether emotional abuse was enough to take people to the court, divorce court, and you know. It became a heated argument. Nobody knew where they stood because probably they didn't understand where you say this is emotional abuse. Let's bring it to, let's say, a couple now. Okay. You know, because that's, I think that's one of the ways that it happens a lot. Yeah. When do you know that your spouse is beginning to abuse you? So um, I remember telling, um, I remember having a, com a conversation with a couple and the girl goes, I do everything in the house, to the washing, the cleaning, just sits down, it does nothing, it was in a... It was in a church conference. He does everything. I feel tired most of the time. Please tell him to help me and stuff. It's getting at me. I'm getting cranky all the time. You know, I get to work tired and all of that. And then I asked the guy, how did you grow up? He says, well, in my house, we share chores, we clean. But, you know, I just assume that as a man, you know, when you're married, your wife does everything. And I asked the, the guy, did you marry a house girl? Hmm. Or did you marry a... A maid. <laughs> so if you have married a girl you said you love, 
then you then you guys should have a balanced house just and getting things done mm. within the house so nobody gets overly tired yeah. than the other because at the end of, of the day the girl begins to feel used mm. and used abnormally mm. overused that's what we call abused overused you know she does everything in the house so why can't we strike a, a balance okay if you if, if, if you do the um, dishes or clean the house mm. or wash the car we get things done and this thing of um um separating um domestic chores in the house this is what men should do we women should do if men can eat from a plate they should be a able to clean the plates the place, yeah. so if women can drive a car they should be able to fill the car now <laughs> okay. it's that simple okay but then when a woman feel abused it, it could be verbally it, 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 it could be the things that the guys say to him to mm. to her that hurt her probably she got married i'm giving an example that i know about probably she got married as a virgin mm. and she really doesn't know so much about sex mm. and the guy's been sexually active and then they get married and then the guy finds you are not just as good you are useless mm. so i think instead of doing that what they should do is to teach each other and learn yeah. Yeah. and learn within the confines of safety mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they practice. Mm. So most of the time, when couples find themselves, or when you, as a man or woman, finds that your partner is weak in some areas, mm. then it is your job to teach them and bring them up to spa. But in the case of an abuse, abuse, uh, someone that's been abused, the superior one or who feels he knows everything <clears throat> begins to taunt the one who is not. Um, 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 maybe struggling in some area yeah. and sometimes they may not even be struggling with any area because I've, I've seen people you know a man talk down on his wife yes. she's not even looking as beautiful as when I married mm. and I'm wondering ah, what more beauty do you want than this one you know and that's why we encourage post marriage counseling okay it start three months after you've been married and the first question will be three months into marriage how do you feel what do you see? You know that part where the Bible says they'll be naked and not be ashamed. Mm. But after a while, how do you feel about it? And then they have mm. conversations and it helps them to, so the basics of that is to help them check what they should work on, mm. what they should improve on. Because at that time, that emotional love feeling dissipates. So you get into, in, into the reality of investing in love and building love when okay. it comes to marriage. So most of the time, in this part of the world, we don't encourage post-marriage counseling. Okay. And then somebody feels that wife is no longer beautiful, the wife feels emotionally abused, and then they keep rocking it, rocking it, mm. and then she gets to a point, she feels I can't accept it anymore, okay. and then they go their separate ways. Oh. Basically because the structures that should be are not in place. But then we have this cultural post-marriage counseling when you go and talk to someone older that's been married, and the and the pay and the person goes, that's how, they, that's how I was in marriage. They have told me too, mm. so you have to enjoy it. Just don't think about it. Forget it and move on. You know, these things, as subtle as they are, yeah. they're heavy mm. and they are deep and they need to be addressed. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go on a break okay. now. And then when we come back, we'll continue the discussion on um, the, the, the victim. Yes, the victim. Who is in a marriage or who is in a relationship or who is in anything. Anything at and all. And is being abused. And it's trying to find a way. Because there's some people that the, the perpetrator cannot find a solution. Yes. You've been in this thing for 10 years. Exactly. And it's not changing. So what should so how do we get How help? do you get yes. help? How do you, so that's what we'll talk about when we'll we come, come back, back after the break. So stay with us. We'll be right back. On this show, we focus on the journey from girlhood to womanhood and everything in between. So you hear now. such comments like it's not ladylike because there is a way a lady should behave. Please don't ask a man out. Mm. I beg you. <laughs> we are so cultured mm. that the day you do. It is in that place of fellowship that you get to discover all these things. You discover yourself? Yes. Biology-wise, women are able to progress faster into mm. addiction than the men. Don't crucify the woman for wanting financial security. Remember, 
every woman is worthy by design. Before we enter the break, we're discussing emotional abuse. And my guest is still Dr. Samuel Adebowale. He is a mental health professional with special focus on trauma, addiction, and abuse recovery. Thank mm. you so much. I've been You're enjoying welcome. and learning <laughs> from this conversation. <laughs> That's a lot I'm throwing at you. Because yeah. there's just, you know, I'm, you know when, you're, when you're talking like this, you're thinking of a lot of things. And yes. you're imagining the different spectrum of people watching yeah. you. And it's a very um, versatile yeah, topic. Yeah, it's a very versatile topic. You can't even finish it in one episode. Exactly. But let's get to how far we can <laughs> go. Go, go. So yes. let's look at the abuse now. Let's, right. Let me just use a, a case like, um, I'm thinking of, um, there's another lady that I know that talks about how she's a pastor's wife, but let me look at the popular um, gospel singer who, who passed on and is in a marriage where she's been, she's been verbally and verbally uh, physically abused. abused. Even that one includes physical abuse. Yes. But let's say somebody that's even in an abusive relationship where the person says every wrong thing to you. I remember listening to a woman and she said, my husband said every wrong thing to me. He only hit me three times. But sometimes I won't prefer the hitting than the words because he says the he, there is nothing I do that is good according to him, you know, so she lost her self-confidence. Mm. But then, of course, she's doing well now. She's also a therapist. She's also teaching a lot of people on that kind of experience. But so somebody in that kind of situation, what should the person do? And this is not just for women, because I'm just thinking it. I'm sounding Apparently like it's, it's both women. ways. It's, it's both also, ways, it's yes. It's also for men. Yes, for men as well. Because there's some men, actually, that their wives are actually abusing seriously. So I'll tell something today, and I'm not being gender biased. Okay. Apparently, we women do more verbal abuse than men because women are expressive. Oh, yeah. So men take them in, they look at it, and once they come out and then they want to act, it becomes a problem. Mm. Mm. But less, that's one topic for some But that's that a day. good thing, actually, to point out because when you notice, when you see some women, when I hear the way they read, they. You no, know, they will say their mouth are sharp. Yes, when they say this, they're wondering, ah, <laughs> is there a human being they're talking to? You know, and the man is just sitting there, and the next thing he just gets up and hits and that's the only way he could express himself. He could express himself. Yeah, at that particular. So but what should they abuse? So the abuse should first accept that they need help. Okay. And go Just and like get the help. Abuser as well. Yeah, so the um, gospel artist we talked about, she knows she needs help. But probably she was resisted by religion. Mm. Now at the end of the day, I say the reality. Mm. When you die, life moves on. Mm, of course, it's moved on. Everybody's doing their thing. There's still gospel singers singing all over the Singing all over the place. Yes. So the first thing is go and get help. And then, of course, when you feel it's happening over time. So it's going to be, most times, the counselors or the psychotherapists we have these days may not uphold the skill of um, conf confidentiality when they're practicing. But that is major. So find someone that you know who would take your words confidentially and then you get the help that you need because um, the first code for therapists or counselors is to understand the code of confidentiality when it comes to issues like that so if, if you feel you want to keep your things private you don't want people to know then go to the professionals okay let them help you but the first thing is speak up get help and when you're getting up open your heart and your mind to get help mm. And in getting help too. Now, when it comes to couple, you, you don't get help alone, but you start to get help first. Okay. And then your husband too will be invited to get help. So, for example, I had a client where the man comes, at, has issues and stuff like that. It was my job to call the man and say, Oh, um, I'm so so person. Your wife is in therapy. She's getting help for so so issues. And we think that you need to be aware. We'd like to visit us and come. And then they come around. And then you come around to speak to them, and you realize that the man who wants to get help themselves. Mm. So, so, so they get into indi in, um, in, uh, individual therapies. Mm. And then at the, end, at the end of the day, they come for group therapies together as a couple, okay. and then they get help. So you can't be getting help, and the abuser is at home. Mm. See, wanting to abuse you, but start first, ask for help. And then one thing we say is everyone should have someone that can speak to them and get them to do things right. So once you're getting help, get that person involved so, so that person can speak to your partner. Do you need to spouse. separate them? 
At you first, need to yes. The, 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 the two persons. Yeah, first, because they are individuals. Friends, whether partners. Partners. Yes. Okay, family. You need to put them apart, isn't it? Because we don't have one mind. We have different minds. Different minds, yes. Okay. So, so, so the mind gets healing um, differently before they come, they come together, together to get healing in agreement. Okay. Now, the reality here is in this part of the world, yes. when people have such problems, there are two people they go to first the pastor. Pastors. <laughs> Or they run to their family member, maybe mommy. Head of the family. Or head of the family or somebody, you know, they feel they can trust. Is that a good choice? Because that's what we're left with most. Because people like you, we don't see them around like that. <laughs> you would say, oh, okay, across the street, on the other street, there's one therapist there you can go and I'm see. Go and see. You know, okay. most of the time people get this information from TV programs like this. They yeah, get, yeah. you know, the number, they get the, but, you know, is that the right thing to do? And then, <sighs> since this is what we, ha we, ha we have happening around us, what should the church be doing now? Okay, because that's good. really... And even when there's a marital problem, the church, even sometimes when people are sick, they go to the pastors first before they even go to see a medical doctor to, okay. to get a solution to their problem. So I'll start this way. Mm -hmm. As much as it sounds good to meet pastors, pastors are primarily speakers mm. and secondarily listeners. They probably say they listen to one person, God. Mm. And then they speak more to humans. Mm. It doesn't mean that they can't help you, but they might not be able to help you the way they should help you. Mm. So that's why we're calling on the church today to create structure, um, structures. So churches have counselors. Yeah. You get your counselors to be trained professionally. Thank you, professionally. And to get the skill. Not because so they've been married come for 30 years. Pastor, you send them to professionals. Not because they've been married for 30 years, 20 years. They, qualified they might have experiences. Experiences are bad and good and just there. But beyond experiences, we need the skills to, to help people. So as professionals, we apply the two tools of experience mm. and of skills to help people. And it really works. Okay. So um, the cry now is that the church should equip their counselors to become professionals mm. standardly so that when we have issues in the church, they can attend to it. Mm. And they can attend to it professionally, not just... Counselors have come to my house, he beat you, sorry, sorry, forgive, forgive your, you, yourself. Lord, yes. That's happened to us 32 years, years ago, my husband beat me, I'm me still here, still strong. Though my hand is broken, <laughs> but I see, yeah, you don't, you don't have to wait till your hand gets broken or you get scars. Mm. As, as soon as you notice, that's what we say to people, as soon as you notice this, the trace from the scratch, seek for help. Mm. So prevention is a very better than cure. Mm. And for me, I really don't like to do uh, collateral damage. Mm. I like to build people to be able to stand the devils in their heart and to be able to give help when they mm. need to give help, mm. basically. So once you notice at the beginning, at the scratch, let's nip it in the board. Let's not wait till it has been, we, we have been through this 10 years now, five years now, from the very beginning. Mm. And that's why I speak to young couples more. From the very scratch when you notice these things, go and get up. Start your post-marriage counseling. Okay. Don't let it build up. So that's what I was saying in the church. Let's get our people trained and skilled so that these things can be done. Look at Oholia Banem, Bezali. God put skills into them because they need our skills to build the temple. The temple yeah. So we need skills to build God's people. Mm. There would always be issues in church. There would yeah. always be struggles and challenges. But we need our people to be properly equipped. And that's why I'm grateful for pastors that have gone back to school mm -hmm. to take courses on things like this, you know, so that they can do it right and do it well. Yeah, yeah. And, the reality be before and even in the process, them. they themselves get help. help yeah. Because the counselors or the therapist needs counseling and needs therapy too. Mm. So it's, bo it's, it's both ways. So that's why we need the church to start now. Like, act now already. We don't need another Osnachi um, to die. Yeah. We don't need another um, um, person to be abused. Both the abuser and the abused need help together. Yeah. So let's not keep helping the abused and leaving the perpetrators alone. Yes, to keep going about doing it to more people. Doing it yeah, more to more we send them to jail. They go to jail. They come back badder. Permit me to, to, to use that word. Mm. They come back worse from jail. And then they keep abusing more people. We need to heal both. Mm. Everybody needs help. For God so loved the whole world, not a mm. part of the world. Yes, I'm yes. not preaching now. No, but I, that's know. <laughs> I know. I understand what you're saying. So everybody, you know, you need to get proper um, 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 counseling. You know, yes. when you are in this problem, you know. So what's the process for the abuser? You know, I've asked for the abuse. No, for the abused. I've asked for the abuser. So the person now is saying, seek help, seek help, seek help. 
when they okay number one our advice is when they come to you in church please send them to professional counselors if you're not trained or trained or skilled that to is. do it yeah i know our church has um, this um, a department that's handling that now okay. you know, the anglican communion that's hang handling the you know the issues of mental health, um, health you know so the people can go there. no i'm not saying go and see psychologist okay i said go and meet psychotherapist so okay. psychologists are people that have been schooled to understand how it works psychotherapists are the people that brings help when there's a problem so okay. some psychologists okay. already start getting trainings to give help okay. not just to say okay have a degree in psychology i can know what the issue is the challenge if you notice they don't want more the challenges the issues mm -hmm. but for psychotherapists like us for Therapies, you are hinged more on solving the problem. problem. Okay. Okay. So, for example, I have a friend that had um, an issue with seizures and has to be on 15 medications morning, oh. afternoon, night by the psychotherapist. So, what they do is they, they, they give us things that will manage it, clinical solutions. So, by the time my friend came for therapy and by the third session, he was just on two of the drugs. By now, it's just one per day. And we're looking up onto when it would go off it totally, and his mind is stronger to accept the reality of stress and life. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and like I say, what um, psychologists would give to us, doctors would give to us, are management okay. practices and drugs okay. that will keep managing it. But we are in on finding a solution to it, helping you walk through it, helping you build your mind back mm -hmm. to what, what God has designed it to be originally, mm -hmm. and you get in help. And, and like I say to people, your result through therapy is directly proportional to the effort you bring into it. Mm. So we need to establish that. So both the abused and the abuser must be ready indeed to get help. I've had people referred for help and they're really not ready to say, okay, they say, as you come, I don't think I need the help. Mm. But I'll, I'll, along the line, when it's worse, they come back and I say they need the help. And then at that point, they need more time and they need to pay more to get the help that they need. Mm. Mm. So most of the time, both parties need help. And both parties should be willing to accept it and stop living in denial. Mm. Accepting that, oh, this is my reality. I'm an abuser, but I can become, uh, uh, I, can, I can get better than this. Mm -hmm. I can stop being an abuser. And not looking, so what do I do? You sign in for therapy, you get the help that you need professionally, the way it's meant to be. Yeah. And so even people who physically abuse too can actually you need yeah, it's psychotherapy. Yeah, that's one of the things they, they call hunger therapy. Okay. Hunger management therapy where they go and get help and then we find out the root cause of what gets them hungry so everyone that has exhibited one issue or the other has an underlining root cause hmm. so i have a friend that used to get angry a lot of the time and stuff by the time we found out in his childhood he had a particular trauma that happened to him from his father and that trauma developed into um hunger traits in him hmm. so what happens is when people have been abused at some point or the other it, it grows into them and it shows up as symptoms and other forms of things comes up in their lives and then it further damages them. Now, I, if you're looking at the environment you live in, don't you think everybody needs to see a psychotherapy at some point? So that's what we say. Just to find out because you, know, you never know why you do the things you do. Yeah. You know, people may just be doing things, they don't even know why, why they do they're it. doing it. Maybe everybody should just sign into one or two classes and just just have a discussion and see. Let's check it. Go find something. That's know? why we say that. Maybe before should. you get married, do it. Maybe first start a job. Do it. Do some kind of psychotherapy. Uh, you know, some, after university, because the trauma of Nigerian universities, you know, so people are on strike. You know, you want, you're supposed to do a course for four years and you're spending six years, six seven years. years, doing eight years, doing the same course. You can't come out of the university normal. Of course. You, you definitely can't come out of the university Absolutely. normal. You, you need some form of therapy to help you pass through. Because after that, you're going to look for a job. You're going to face the society. And yeah. So you need some form of uh, therapy to exactly. prepare you. Exactly. I think that's what I'm going to take away from this. Everybody should. Sure. So I'm going to um, demystify it this way. When people hear therapy, they, they feel they it's something bad, yes. negative, mental. So there is something called mental health and mental illness. Mental health is the health of men, just like the physical health and all, uh, and the spiritual health. Mm. Mental illness is the problem. But then, everybody averagely needs to check in to see a therapist. Okay. You don't have to wait when it's severe, when you have to be carried there, when you have to be referred there. So um, what we advise is that in a month, 
at least once a month, speak to a therapist. Every organization, every company should have a therapist come in once a month and speak to your staffs. So let's assume that you have a staff that was high performing at some point. Mm. And then at, it got to a stage where he or she started performing low. The first thing is not to go to the HR. The first thing is to get that person to see a therapist and get help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something had obviously gone wrong somewhere yeah. that has affected the performance. And it can be corrected. It can be fixed. So and it's not when you have an issue or when it's so severe and so bad. Once a month, if you can go to the hospital and do medical checkup, mm -hmm. vital signs of your body, mm -hmm. then check the, the vital signs of your mind as of well. Mind. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So once a month, the woman by the well had a therapy with Jesus. Jesus told her about her past mm -hmm. so, so that she can get help and have a good future. Yeah, so they, they had a conversation. Of course, the Bible didn't tell us all the conversation, conversation. they had. But they but must have some good, one. long conversations. For her to have gone back and tell everybody. So Jesus walked on her mind and helped her come to. Exactly. So that is actually how it works. Um, I think everybody should come and see you. <laughs> we need your number. Not we number. need every means of contacting you. So you and don't then, have to have a big problem. Yeah, too. Just, just that discussion. You know. So I have friends that will just call me and say, a ah, guy. This is what's going on through my mind. They will talk, 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 talk. I just listen and that's all they need. Mm. Most times they don't even get to talk. Mm. Mm. So after they said all that is their mind, everything, every, every, everything, they go. Mm. And, and they are fine. That's, 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 yeah, that's because men don't talk much. They just bottle everything. And that's know? why I have a close group for men. Mm. Where you just come and talk and say whatever I want to say. We listen to you and you go home. Mm. Basically. And that will relieve you. A lot of tension. Though, yeah, how you feel, what you feel, so, say everything, and then if I have to say a thing or two, I will. But most times, I feel I have realized that I do, really don't have to just need to listen. Okay, so your telephone number, <laughs> I, I, we can contact you, isn't it? Yes, yes, like yes. Our viewers can contact. I'm very reachable. Yes, reachable. So can you do over the phone, or they need to come mm. and meet you? No, where I, you are? of course we're in a virtual world now mm -hmm. so we can do it um, virtually i have my scheduling link and time so i'm not it's not like i'm available all the time all so once time. you schedule in mm -hmm. then we get to speak okay. and then if you need um, um if you need um, to go through long-term therapy mm -hmm. we do if it's short term if you just need someone to talk to you know everything comes so because we're professional all of this thing comes at a fee and sometimes i do pro bono okay it depends on what the um, cases and what the issue is. So I'm very reachable. Okay, very reachable. So your contact is shown on the screen now, but can you just go over it? Okay. Um, plus 23480 mm -hmm. 5944 mm -hmm. 0885. Mm -hmm. Plus 23480 5944 Then you can, you can mail me at Excel Space. <sighs> Excel. Okay. Then Space1 at gmail.com. Okay. Excel space one at gmail.com. That's basically Excel. you can send me mail, then I'll attend to it. Okay. And if you have to f um, fix a session or a schedule, we do that. And then if you have a church and you feel, oh, we need to put structures to it, I have, um, I'm a member of the African network of pro professional counselors. Okay. So you could have people's structures to church, train, faith based training for um, faith based organizations. Okay counselors and then can put the, stru the structure so that's one of our art cry mm. to spread mm. to put structures in churches to help everyone mm. i cannot speak to everyone or help everyone yeah. but i'm willing to raise somebody else yeah train yeah. somebody else that would be able to do it okay okay that's really that's a lot yes, <laughs> that's a lot of work you know when you said that you listen a lot and i can imagine what it's like to just sit and listen to people see yeah. all the things they have in their heart so that's the product of our training so when we went to training for nine months mm. and of course i'm told that by the time you're done with this training you'll be st your your art posture will, would have changed mm. so when people want to talk you just listen you find comfort mm. just like you're seeing a movie you're, you're listening to a story on radio, just enjoy it. Mm. Take your notes or do your recordings. So you need to go back in terms of what they've said, mm. ask questions. Is this what you mean by this? Is that what this means? So they're clear on everything mm. and you're able to help them. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I you're welcome I, very much. I've learned, so, I'm so glad you called in. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad we have had this discussion. And I know our viewers have... Um, actually learned a lot. I want to really trust God that 
there's an abuser that is listening and we find them they'll find help oh. and then there's an, someone that's been abused that's listening they'll just call in and ask for help that's my whole that will that will make me fulfill, make me feel fulfilled, fulfilled. On this, for this program today because i know i trust that uh, they'll get good help from you Thank you so much for coming on the program. You're welcome. We've learned so much for you. We hope to have you back again. Yes. Come and talk about other things. There's a lot I need to grab from yes. you. Yes. I'll be glad Thank to come back. Thank you so much, viewers. Thank you so much for staying with us. For the past uh, couple of minutes, I've been speaking with Dr. Samuel Adebowale. He's a mental health professional with special focus on trauma, addiction, and abuse recovery. I believe you have learned so much today. Please call us with the numbers showing on your screen or you can send you know to all you can reach us out on our on our, all our social send media. Send WhatsApp messages alone. Okay text. for the number okay. text message or WhatsApp, WhatsApp message, message then you reach back to you. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you next week. My name is Angela Emeka Ebibo. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.